All right, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about drawing uh, free body diagrams. Uh, oftentimes, I just like to abbreviate it FBDs. Um, you might also hear it referred to as force diagrams. Um, either way, they're all the same thing. Um, what's nice about free body diagrams is you don't have to be a good artist at all to draw force diagrams, which is good for me um, because in the world of physics, um, this is what an elephant looks like. Um, that's also what a car looks like. It's what you look like. Um, in any free body diagram, we simply take the object and we reduce it down to either a box or I've also seen it where it's a point. Um, it doesn't really make a difference. Okay. Um, what we're really looking for here is we are now going to evaluate forces that are acting on an object. So just as a real quick refresher, um, some of the forces that we've talked about so far, um, applied forces, which are pushes and pulls, uh, tension forces, which are forces which are the result of, say, uh, a cable or something like that, or a rope, um, friction forces, which oppose motion. Uh, let me see here. I'm missing one other one here. Uh, normal forces, which are always perpendicular to a surface okay and then the field force that we've referred to already uh, is f of g uh, uh, force of gravity or also known as the weight of an object okay um, so what these diagrams are is let's just say you're standing on the ground so if this is just somebody standing the forces that are acting on them, if, as long as you're standing on the floor, you might have the force of gravity. And gravity always works down towards the center of the Earth. And then we might have the normal force, which always acts perpendicular to the surface. Okay? Um, oftentimes, as long as you're just standing there, we don't worry that there's friction between you and the surface um, because it would be acting in all directions, which is a little tough to draw in two dimensions. Okay. Um, we could do the same thing with this one, with the dot f of g and f of n. Now, another thing to keep in mind here, and we'll get into this as, as we keep going, but um, if any of the vectors are equal to each other, for example, if you're just standing still, um, then I know that the normal force and the gravitational force have to be the same. So I like to use these little hash marks on here to represent that the normal force is equal to the gravitational force. And we could do the same thing with this picture. So this is just a basic outline of what a free body diagram is. Now I want to do a couple examples. Um, this is from uh, my general physics class. Okay, And we just did this one, right? Um, if the object's laying motionless, then we've got an f of g and an f of n. Okay. Um, in this case, I might want to start talking about the fact that those two things are equal to each other. Um, and I could write what's called a sum equation, which the sum of the forces in the y would be equal to f of n plus f of g, and they would equal 0. Okay, and the reason of this is because gravity is acting down, therefore negative. Normal force is acting up, therefore positive. And if I add them together, I get zero. Now this is, you know, something that, again, we're going to get into, but it is important to recognize that those two forces cancel each other, hence motionless. It's at equilibrium. Okay, um, on this one object slides at a constant speed without friction. And this is one that people will oftentimes screw up. Okay, this goes back to Newton's first law that says an object in motion stays in motion. So the fact that it's moving at a constant speed indicates that it is still at equilibrium. It's got a constant speed. So the only forces that are acting on this would be a normal force and a gravitational force. And again, the equation for that would look just the same as this. And I used y here because everything was in the vertical direction. Okay. Um, if, say, we take a look at one of these, slowing down due to friction, okay, you're still going to have a normal force. 
you're still going to have a gravitational force as long as you're on this planet or any other planet that is. Um, and those are going to be equal to each other, but it says it's slowing down due to friction. Okay. Now, it looks like it's moving this way. So if it's moving that way, then friction acts this way. And this is a case where friction is all by itself. That's an unbalanced force, which is why it's slowing down. That's an acceleration. Okay. Um, let's take a look at, say, another one. Let's look at this one, the static friction one right here. Notice that this is on an angle. Okay. Um, it's still important to know that if we drew a line that would represent, say, the Earth, gravity still acts straight down perpendicular to the earth. The normal force acts perpendicular to the surface. Okay, So I'm going to draw this at a slightly higher angle to maybe show you a little bit more of what I'm talking about here. Okay, We'll call this the earth and we'll do this as the angle. Okay. Is the ramp. So gravitational force is still straight down, but the normal force is perpendicular to the surface. But it's still said that this box is still. Okay, so as of right now, though, those two forces are not in the same direction at all. So why isn't it sliding down? So one thing that is oftentimes easier to, to see here is that if I were to turn this so that the box was now on a flat surface, okay, this is a vector that is at an angle and that can be split into a y and an x. Well now I know that if it's at rest this vector and this vector should be equal. And now there's a vector here that needs to be canceled by something. Well, if the box is still, there must be some friction that is preventing the box from sliding down the ramp. And I end up with a force diagram that looks something like that. Okay. Um, one important thing to keep in mind here is that if we knew the angle, let's say this was a 30 degree angle, okay? The f of g makes a 90 degree angle to the surface, which means this angle up here is 60. So then my new picture, when I turned it like this, sorry, it's a little bit below my line there, okay, this angle must also be 30 degrees, because this is a 90 degree angle here as well. So you'll notice that the angle that the ramp makes with the Earth is the same as when I draw this picture and my gravitational force makes with vertical. Okay, so that's something that you can keep in mind as well when you're drawing these. Okay, um, let's maybe do one more quick example. Wait a second here. All right. Um, let's take a look at at this one. Okay. Um, in this case, there's a tension force this way. It's a rope. And then there's a tension force this way. And there's a gravitational force down this way. Now, this is a situation where we've got two things that are at a right angle. So I would leave those there. And I've got this one tension up here that isn't. So I'm going to call this one tension 1. I'm going to call this one tension 2. And I'm going to split this one into a Y and an X component. And now I should be able to see that as long as this is motionless, all the forces have to cancel. This gravitational force matches with the Y component of this, and this tension force goes with the X component of the first tension. Okay. So these are just a few examples of free body diagrams, just so that you're aware of them. Um, Again, we'll, we'll work with more and more different types of free body diagrams. Obviously, there are tons of different um, types of problems we can look at. Um, but drawing appropriate free body diagrams is vital to proper problem solving. Okay? All right. Hope that helped.